I'm Dan Dixie. We're uh, at Red's Pond today. It's May 24th, 2018. I'm here with Cliffy Smith, Cliff the Whiff, some other names that we can't mention. Um, just going to talk to him for a few minutes and uh, start with where were you brought up? Where were you born and where were you brought up? I, uh, well, I'll settle this whole thing. I, 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 my mother <clears throat> Is a Smith. Everybody knows Isa from town. She's she's put a lot of she's she's a transplant. But my father was born and raised here, and uh, he was born in the old Mary Alley, and uh, back in the early twenty uh, twenties, and he's gone now. But he, uh, I'm live. My mother's living in the third, probably a third generation house, and uh, built in the eighteens, and she's still there, and. So oh, and oh, yeah, getting back to when I was born, I was uh, my my mother. Uh, I was born in uh, March eighth, nineteen fifty six, in a, a pretty bad windstorm, and uh, uh, she took me straight to Salem Hospital to be born. And uh, uh, this, I kind of consider myself a marble header. I just she uh, her doctor didn't handle uh, Mary Alley, so um, I'm, here I am. Uh, <laughs> so would you consider yourself a header, or a transplanter, or a half transplanter? What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, I, I consider my, I, I'm a beauty, that's all everybody tells me downtown. They say, Cliff, you have yes, one beauty. And I go, oh, there's not much I can say other than that, but I love everybody. I'm a people person and I'm, I'm going to bust your cookies, everybody, until I die. <laughs> Well, I, I've always said that you're not a header when you call yourself one. You're a header when someone else calls you one. And I know a lot of people that call you a header, so maybe that maybe that settles that that argument. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. And you know, I, I got my aunt down and down that had the the peanut butter front store. She had Aunt Sadie. She's her house is still there. A gentleman fixed it all up nice down there. And and my mother's lived here for well my. 70 years, probably, yeah, probably 70 years now. And, and where you've worked in Marblehead your whole life, I know we worked together 1979 oh, for about right. a year yes. for the town. Uh, did you have seen pictures of you on a lobster boat or what? Oh, yeah. You, um, yeah, it was quite an adventure living in, uh, in Barney Gut. Um, you had the Graves family, Randy, and and I had Tommy LaBeouf that, uh, up here near Red's Pond, where where we are right now, Tommy would be. Uh, he can we play together when we were kids, and he, he could always hear his mother's cowbell ringing to bring him home for dinner, or or I'd be up at his house up here, and I could hear my father's screaming whistle. He I, he he thought I was a dog. I, I I don't know, but mother always used to get mad at me for that. I mean, mad at him for it, but. You know, and uh, you know, it's been a, a blessing being in Barney Gut. I went offshore fishing with Huey Bishop. I tried my hand at uh, the tub trawling for through my high school years, and so, uh, and I worked at the uh, lobster pool, Barber's Lobster Pool, and uh, uh, Arlene Willard's uh, uh, mother and father ran that, and uh, Arlene Briggs Willard, and. Uh, I don't know. What else did you get, Danny? I just how, you, how long did you work for the town oh, of Marblehead? Dear, and what sorry. what department? I know you were driving the lunch truck when uh, oh, when yeah. I was a, an assistant oh, mechanic with with Bunchy up at the health department. Yeah. Uh, but you worked at the cemetery. Yep. Yep. I um, uh, when I quit school, tenth grade, I just I couldn't have I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the school system, but that's fine. They everybody says they didn't have that kind of you know, kind of help, and now there are people out there helping, and uh, I, I just wish I had a better education, but uh, I think the town paid for me twice, Danny, because uh, they, I went to school system, the 10th, and then all of a sudden I got hired on to the cemetery by Benny Woodfin, and um, uh, I was close to, I was, I was close to going into the service, and Back then, the Vietnam War was going on, and my father really was kind of nervous having my brother, my older brother Stevie, in in 
the service from what mom told me and she was really nervous about me and then somehow I ended up replacing Joel Martin's job. Joel Matt, old Joel, he, he passed away and, and, and Benny called me up and said, say, is your aunt, uh, Liz, Liz Boggess? And I said, yeah. I, so I said, uh, well, come up and see me. So they had a job opening and then I started with Benny digging graves. So that was interesting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then I transferred from there after I couldn't, I, I, I felt I had to move on. And then I, like Danny said, I went, I went to the school department started the uh started the had a pretty good job doing school lunches i hired all my friends that were, couldn't make it through college after a or they and that was that was a riot I, I they know who they are out there and uh and we had a lot of fun and uh then i transferred into uh the school took a breather from the school left the town and came back and uh worked for the town again i got my ears in and now Hopefully, uh, um, you know, I'm partially retired right now. I just got to get myself back in my, my bagpipes is my sideline. That, that, that's what I was going to ask you about. I mean, you're a legendary bagpiper in Marblehead. You've sent off a, an awful lot of headers at oh. the, at, at funerals. You've, uh, well, in 1999, you played at the, uh, I had a, a photo exhibit and slideshow for the Marblehead 350th celebration and you, Played the, the bagpipes there. You were parades. You were uh, very, very active. Any <laughs> memorable bagpipe stories? Or oh yeah. Any? Oh, I had some great ones. Um, uh, I, you know, something. I, my father was the first funeral I ever bagpiped. He, I was with Tom Rose taught me how to do it, and I just, I, you know, I sat down many a times hearing his war stories, and I got into the bagpipes, and and uh, I. Pretty much had a musical ability, uh, you know, by ear. And um, uh, Tom had teached a, a lot of the Oak House bagpipers there. Uh, Jimmy Laramie's one of them, and Jimmy is—he's uh, uh, giving up right now. He says it's time to play with his grandchildren. So I, he says, "Cliff, I'm, I'm all through. You got to do it now." I, so right now, I'm kind of—I'm not going to say I'm all through, but I want to get some, get my fingers back into shape. And as far as uh, the things I had done, yes. I did a lot of funerals. I think one of one of the one biggest ones was normal. Uh, Nor was it normal Warren? She used to walk her dog all over the place, and I used to chase her on the farm tractor on the track of wreck. <laughs> and and all of a sudden I get a call. I got a call to go play her funeral up at Abbott Hall. So I I took it up. I, I said, why not? You know, she was she was a nice lady, but and uh, that was an interesting one. I've I've done many, many functions that out of town, and uh, uh, with a band. I was with the Clan McPherson band, and uh, out in North Andover, and uh, um, it was fun. I traveled all over the place, the Highland Games, and it's kind of come to a halt right now. Like I said, so uh, as far as Marble Hit Forever right now, my uh, uh, I it's a great tune. I. I, I really love it. I play it on my harmonica. I play it on my tin whistles and all that stuff. And uh, as far as the bagpipes, in another year maybe I'll be back into. Uh, uh, what, what's this? This is uh, 18, maybe in 19. I might be able to yeah. get back into it. Yeah. I, I will say that Cliff brought his bagpipes today. He hasn't played. When's the last time you played him? It's been years. <laughs> And he him. tried tried to help us kept him from uh, doing yeah. it in his hands. I had something knocked the heck out of me this year, and it I haven't really picked him up for about a I haven't picked him up for about a year right now since this happened, and my fingering and everything is just kind of a mess. So yeah. well, I got three I, bag vipers. I, I appreciated that you brought him and, and tried, and I did get a little bit of a clip when you were warming up yeah. and, and trying to see what uh, you I'm could sorry, do. Guys, so I got I, would love to play I got a little bit. But, so. but no, I. Uh, no, I uh, I brought them with me. They're right over here. There they are. There's those babies. I, yep, I yeah. love them. They, yeah. But. And I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to um, mention while we're here. I mean, we talk. Well, the big thing has been like I, this town is changing, Danny. Uh, I'm not going to have anything to do with it, probably, or or you, you know, I mean, it's just going to change and all your answers, it's, I think it's cool that you're doing what you're doing and I think, uh, uh, 
I we need people like that, and you know, I just I don't know. I put my I put about twenty twenty five to thirty years on close. You know, um, I got twenty five solid with the town, and I uh, and I they're losing every you know money and everything about this town. I just uh, they, they I think they got to maintain uh, my my school I went to Gary School there. They're, uh, I'd like to see, I'd love to see them. There's some realtor or somebody will, or somebody with money will take and make that into another house, for just like, uh, like road school, uh, story school. Yeah. Yeah. Story yeah. Well, school. there's no doubt the town has changed. I mean, even from the '60s and '70s, growing up, and I mean, we've seen. So Marblehead's not the Marblehead that we grew up in, no, and it is. never, never will be. Every every place changes, and you know that that's what happens. But yeah. you know, hopefully, Marblehead can maintain some of its charm yeah. over the years. Well, I tried Maine for 12, 14 years and I'll tell you it there's nothing like Mar there's nothing like Marblehead and the people that move here I, I just hope they they moved here for a reason and I just hope they they look at the uh, when you're walking down the streets and stuff like that and around and you know it's just there's something about it people are close they say hi I've been actually you know a lot of highs here you know and that's kind of cool you can't go into Lynn or I went into Boston and asked him for directions, <laughs> and the guy just walked right by me. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it's, it, it's, a, it's the closeness. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a friendly town. I mean, it, because it was days when we used to know everybody. You'd walk down the street, you know, right. and, and know everybody, and, um, but, but it is a pretty, pretty friendly place. So. Yeah. And we, I went to town meeting, and um, that was interesting. That was, uh, everybody raised their hands, and... We had a couple of people, townie people, get up, and one old time, Mr. Butler. Oh, he was a classic. I mean, uh, he tried, and he did a good. I mean, he did a good job getting points across. And and um, I don't know. I just I, I just love Barney Gap, though. I mean, you used to clam. I used to. I remember clamming down there off Brown, in Browns Island. I remember the muscle beds across my aunt Sadie's store that you couldn't really walk across here without going over the muscle bed and cutting your feet. Uh, but uh, that's all gone now, and I'm, I'm t they've cleaned the water up so much here. I, even the lobster, I, I don't think the lobster is all as good as it used to be when when they had the outfall, <laughs> you know. Well, I don't know if there's anything else that uh, any face Facebook. Do you what? You get bullied on Facebook? No, I, I don't. You know I, something? I'm, I'm a people pain in the, people yeah, pick on no, you. No, no, you're, I love it. Hey, I'm, I'm going to use. Uh, Everybody know Tommy Murray or <laughs> Tommy gave me this saying, told me, you know, he said, you know, Cliff, he says, if you're picking on me, you're leaving somebody else alone. So I, I just said, what a great saying. And uh, so I've used that and I've borrowed it from him. So how, how big are you? Do you mind if I ask how big you are? Stand up because uh, I, I find it funny I, I, when, I see, get, yeah. when I see people bully, bully you on, no, on Facebook. It, no. huh? <laughs> When we when we stood up, we kind of got off the, oh, the camera, that's okay. us off, but we got the audio. Yeah. So but Facebook is my, my my therapy. I I don't I don't need a psychiatrist. Honest, honest, I don't. Yeah, so. it might uh, probably debatable, but oh we'll oh come on, Danny, <laughs> Jesus, oh man, that's cruel. All right, all right. I guess um <laughs> that wraps it up here with uh. All right. If anybody wants to talk about Barney Gap, yeah, I'm more than happy to shoot the breeze with you. He was nice enough to come all the way down from Maine. To all right. I'm a, I'm a transplant. Action Maine. I'm a, I'm a transplant. You're a transplant? I'm a transplant in Maine. I'm a header. Oh, yeah. But I'm oh, a no, transplant no, no, no. in Maine. I was in 14 I don't years in Maine. I don't, try I, to I don't try to change things up yeah. there. I let the locals. Oh, and when you go to vote, locals. you know, when you, get, when you go to your vote, right, when you go into the, the big auditorium, you know, the, the school to vote or something in the thing, can't, I, I loved going in there. They go, I'd go and I'd vote, give it to them. And then the lady behind the desk would go, Republican, Republican. I go, I looked at her, I go, Republican, why are you saying that? I go, they never did that in mass. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm sorry, I'm a Republican. <laughs> Been it since I was 18 years old. Hi, Dan. Dan, thanks for the interview. Okay. Shake my hand. All right. Good seeing you. It's always a pleasure. Maybe we'll do it again someday.